Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Reveal Report. I'm your host, George Iceman. Thank you for joining us as we kick off the weekend with an unbelievable story and testimony. I have a very special guest who will be joining us very, very soon. And um, you have to hear what she's experienced, what she went through, which again gives credence and credibility to what we've been telling you for years. There is a battle of supernatural power happening in the heavenlies. You cannot see it. You cannot taste it. Sometimes you can smell it with its presence and its darkness. This is something that we're going to definitely dive into because it's important. And I've touched on it before. Psychic mediums, uh, communications with the spirit realm, and sometimes they don't know it. Um, a lot of these mediums and psychics may not know, but it's ancestral. It's in their blood. They have what many refer to as the gift, and they're able to communicate, sense, they could see, uh, they could tell you what's going to happen, um, and they'll have uh, spiritual beings communicating this information to them. Some of them don't want the gift. Uh, some of them take it, and it is passed on to their children, and so forth and so forth. This is very real stuff, ladies and gentlemen. It's happened, it's all around us, and it's everywhere. The Reveal Report. As we dabble into the occult, the supernatural, the esoteric, we thank you for joining us. Jesse is on uh, assignment today, so she's not with us. We'll be back next week. We appreciate you guys being with us. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Over 12,000, ladies and gentlemen, on Twitter. Thank you. It's 10,000 on Telegram. 40 plus thousand on YouTube because of you. All natural, no advertising, no marketing. Just you that come here to look for some truth and to uh, use your discernment to see what's real, what's not real. One of the only shows, I believe, on YouTube that talks about our topics. So we thank you for being here. And without further ado, I want you to please welcome my guest, Miss Jen Niza. Jen, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. God bless your ministry. Thank you so much. Jen, I, I came across a video with you, mm -hmm. and uh, you're an ex-psychic medium, mm -hmm. keyword being ex and um, you understand what we're talking about when I say tarot cards and mediumship and psychic mm -hmm. phenomenon, communicating with the other world. Now, you were, I would assume, a professional who would be paid mm -hmm. to help people in giving them advice or giving them information on their future as it was shown to you. That's right. So if you don't mind, tell us a little bit before mm -hmm. uh, you came to Christ on what you did and how you did it. It started for me at a very young age. Um, I was attacked psychically through a dream when I was 12. And what I mean by that is I was uh, dreaming about things that then occurred, um, future things that then occurred. Um, didn't really think too much about it because I was just a kid. Now, at that time, uh, paranormal activity was spoken about in my house. It was comfortable to talk about that in my house. My great aunt was a medium, a self-professing healer, which now we would call that Reiki. Um, and I had my first tarot card reading at the age of 13. And that is really, I, when I look back, the door that I walk through giving those demons legal permission to come into my life, because I absolutely loved that tarot card reading. I was intrigued by it and I wanted more after that. So that started the rabbit hole of destruction. I started getting really into tarot. My sister and I did readings on each other. She had a deck, I had a deck. And it's it becomes an addiction. And when you think about something that's demonic, it's really no surprise. Um, you get addicted to the knowledge, knowing things that you really shouldn't know, knowing things in advance. There's a lot of pride involved. And plus, it was a place to go when you had the questions. You know, I always say this. It's a supernatural, two supernatural sources, right? God or the devil. So if you don't know the Lord, which I didn't, I was raised culturally Catholic. I knew of Jesus. I knew what he did. I, I felt sad when I would watch the movies of his crucifixion and, you know, whatever the Easter movies. But I didn't know him. I didn't know him. I never a relationship with him. And so there I was a sitting duck. And that's what I call people sitting ducks. When you don't have the Lord, you are vulnerable and the devil prowls around. So 
from these supernatural sources, you can go to one or the other for your information, for your answers to things in life, you bring your feelings to, right? So every time I wanted to know something, I would go to the cards. Um, if something wasn't settling in my life well, or I was curious or whatever, I would go to the cards or a reader. I was giving readings at home, family and friends, and I was going for readings constantly. And it just escalated. It went from tarot to numerology charts, to astrology charts, to clairvoyance, even doing, um, you know, the candles, um, really, which is witchcraft, you know, people saying, hey, if you give me X amount of money, uh, you know, I'll light these candles for you and this will lift a spell or whatever, all witchcraft. And it just kept going and going and going. And until it escalated to the point of the mediumship. So all uh, psychics aren't mediums, but all mediums are psychic. So this went into the mediumship um, realm for me. So, so I, I got to say that this is incredible uh, because you're, you're, you're getting into some very important things because some of our viewers, you know, they always ask, is it okay to do the tarot cards? I don't think there's something wrong, but there is something wrong. There, there, it's absolutely positive because like you said, you're giving permission and blessing for these entities that come into your life. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Jen, this is what's kind of like the unwritten uh, knowledge of some of these tarot cards. You might know better, so you know I'll come to you for it. But I've always been told and taught that on the day these cards are made, um, depending on where they're made, um, a ritual, a ceremony is done and it's given authority to a particular deity, which gives them power for territory. So wherever these cards go around the world, whatever medium is using them, that is belonging to this deity or whatever entity that they have done a ritual for on releasing these cards for its power. So you summon, you're doing your thing, the power of this creature, this demonic force comes to give you that knowledge and information as well as what you already have connected to you. But then as that goes out, territory, 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 and it expands its territory and comes into these people's lives. This is horrific. And a lot of people don't want to believe it. They think it's just it's just a bunch of cards. Is it really that simple, just a bunch of cards? No, and, and that's the sad thing. Uh, but if you think about the enemy, he is the master of deception. He's a manipulator and he's a liar. He masquerades as an angel of light. So he makes things seem like a joke or like entertainment, when in fact it has a, a much bigger uh, significance than that and a very high cost to pay spiritually. As you mentioned in the beginning, there is a spiritual battle going on to the... Um, it's invisible to the eye, but it is happening. And when you start playing, playing with any sort of a divination tool, because that's what tarot cards are. They are a tool of divination. So just for the sake of understanding, divination is when you seek knowledge supernaturally outside of God's will and boundaries, because God says from the beginning of his word to the end, do not practice or consult any form of divination. So you're engaging that. Now you've opened that door. It's divination. All right, you've been duped. You're deceived. You're thinking you're playing a game. They're at the carnivals. You've got our culture now. You've got social media. You've got a tarot card reader at the click of a button. And you're over there feeling lonely, sad, depressed. You're grieving. Or you just think it's a good time. Or you just think it's like sometimes people reading horoscopes. Well, it's just a, it's ridiculous. Why not? It's not. There is, a, there is a significant price to pay for getting involved with these demonic um, practices and opening these demonic doors. Huge price to pay. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up. Divination is key. It's biblical. Um, you know, it's part of my testimony that I would uh, participate in different forms of divination. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I, I talked about this sometimes at nauseum to watch out for the different forms of divination. Some people read tea leaves. Others will do what we call dowsing with rods, I've done that, um, uh, candles and, and reading the flame, that's another way. Candle mm -hmm. magic is something I was into, like you mentioned earlier. Very powerful, deep stuff, very ancient stuff mm -hmm. uh, on that. Uh, and again, there's the crystal ball, there's the tarot cards. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways, there's even something called scrying uh, into a mirror. So many ways to communicate. One particular way, which I found extremely dangerous, uh, and I've touched on it, I wanna get your feedback on this. Another form of divination, the Ouija board. <laughs> yep. 
Oh boy, do I hate the Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, right? We hate what God hates, we love what God loves, right? So the Ouija board is a very um, old, nothing new under the sun, right? But it actually is old, marketed as a game by Hasbro Brothers or whomever. And it's actually automatic writing. That's what it is. Yes. And what gets me is I think most people have an idea that it's blatantly evil because a lot of people will say they're scared um, before they even do it. And they're kind of just testing it out. Children get their hands on this. So what happens is they are uh, invoking demons by asking questions. Um, so they're invoking a supernatural power source and they're asking the question and then uh, the planchette will start to move around uh, and it will answer the question and it will, and it's writing something out or it's spelling something out. And that is automatic writing. When you are channeling demons to get information via words or, or what have you. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, it's interesting. You mentioned this over again, you're, you're letting them know that it's automatic writing. Absolutely. And I want everyone to be extremely clear and I will challenge any other former occultist, any current occultist, those in the highest levels of magic, listen to me carefully here, folks, do not use Ouija boards. I repeat, those in the highest levels do not use Ouija boards. I've gone when in this old world of mine to certain shops where you're going to get certain paper, certain incense, certain candles, certain um, uh, herbs to do your spells. Never! Was there a Ouija board in a real witchcraft store ever? I've never seen one. And there's a reason for that. You cannot control the outcome of who you're communicating with. With divination, uh, or if you're asking for help, usually you're, you're picking a specific deity to communicate, or you're making a deal or a promissory note. This is what I'll do in return for you giving me knowledge and information. So you kind of have an idea who you're working with in the old ancient uh, books. Uh, they'll tell you, they'll follow the rules and regulations of these books. They're ancient, they're passed on. Um, and you'll learn from what they've done. They've never used Ouija boards. This is all to infect and poison um, the innocence uh, of this world. They're selling it to children, Jen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Children are buying this. And you could go online right now on videos and see horrible after effects. When, when training with... Lorraine Warren, the one thing we learned from her records is that you can play with a Ouija board today and it takes up to seven years before you can even feel sometimes the infestation or the attack. So it's sometimes not even instant. It'll take up to seven years mm -hmm. and then it becomes rampant. There's no time in the afterlife. Remember that, folks. So Ouija boards, I beg, I plead, stay away if your children got one, stay away, get rid of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you cannot dabble with this form of divination. And like Jen said, this is 100% spirit writing. And, you know, the children are really being targeted through social media today, through our culture. You can go into Five Below. I call it witchcraft on a budget. You can go into Five Below and they have books on spells, astrology for children, for children, tarot card decks. Now kids are bringing crystals into schools. Smudging is um, going on all over the place. This is what um, is trendy. I hate to say it, but they're glamorizing it. Witchcraft is being glamorized. And of course, there's nothing new under the sun, but the devil is current and active. And he's using what we've got today via technology um, to deceive the masses. It's unbelievable. What you're saying is absolutely true, 100%. And I got to throw this to you now because this is important. I want to get your opinion on this. You said that they're using the media. They're influencing our youth. Do you believe, and this is from what I've seen, but I'd like to get your take, that movies, television is really pushing this type of uh, witchcraft, satanic agenda upon the future of, of today? Do, do you believe that? What are your thoughts on that? 100 million percent. It, I mean, most recently, Vanessa Hudgens, which was really sad because, you know, I remember her back in high school musical and we have to pray for her. We have to pray for people involved with witchcraft. But mm -hmm. she goes on the Kelly Clarkson show talking all about these um, psychic gifts that she is now embracing. 
uh, one of the, she she went with Gigi Hadid to a cemetery. They mm-hmm. went with their their paraphernalia to hear to communicate with spirits or what have you. Then they go and they make a documentary about witchcraft. I believe in Salem. I believe that's where they went. Mm-hmm. And hey, there's pretty Vanessa Hutchins and Gigi Hadid appealing to the 20 year olds and whatever else. And they're making movies. And then you've got Netflix where, hey, you've got Tyler Henry, the medium on there, and he's got the show. And, you, you know, it, it, it is constantly in the movies. It's constantly um, in people's faces. The devil is not hiding. Yeah, 100%. Um it's everywhere. And, and this is an important warning. I want to rally back to, you know, you're an ex medium psychic. Mm-hmm. You, you would, you know, you told us how you used to dabble with the tarot cards. So dangerous. Um, but you, you started doing this professionally where people yeah. would pay you actually give you money to read their futures, horoscopes, maybe help them in situations. Can you talk to us a little bit of that touch on that and tell us what kind of experiences, what kind of people would come visit you and, and pay you and, and what kind of things did you do? I, this is so important to talk about because I, I I want people to understand the illusion and the deception because I really thought I was helping people. I really wanted to help people. I had people that lost their children, people that lost their spouses. I was like the girl next door, in my opinion. I shopped casually. I wasn't in any sort of, you know, hippie type of outfit or gothic type of outfit. It was very straightforward. I had my candles lit and everything else. And I really had a compassion uh, for these people. But then once and once I got into more of the group readings and everything, there was a big melting pot. There was uh, one time I read a woman who uh, it was a very it was a very bad situation. She actually had been shot by her uncle and the demon coming through or the familiar spirit coming through was pretending to be the uncle. So now I'm literally the medium. And she's looking at me with daggers in her eyes because she hates this man. I mean, you know, and and I believe it's this guy coming through, of course, because why not? That's who I dealt with. I never questioned the spirits. Uh, They they were who they said they were. And they gave validations and they gave information that I never could have known because I was a stranger to these people. Um, And that was a really a terrible situation. But most people were people that just wanted to know their future, or they wanted to really connect with people that had uh, been deceased, because they are great. Listen, we've all lost somebody. It's I understand and my heart goes out and it's and it's sad and you don't want to let go. Grief is arguably the hardest emotion that we face in in humanity in our flesh. Um, and you don't want to let go. And, and the sad thing is, though, that it's a hamster wheel, the new age, Divination is a hamster wheel because you only get a temporary feeling of maybe peace, um, contentment, or what have you. And then you got to book your next appointment because you will not have any sort of everlasting peace, joy, contentment, or any sort of real fulfillment without Christ. It's so sad. And you're absolutely right. They come because they want information they want to know you know to communicate with the other side and, and talk about that it was a big thing in the spiritualist movement in the 1900s uh, especially in new york with the fox sisters this is big this is absolutely big um i gotta tell you you did communicate you would tell them their futures how would you channel that energy because you did you know say that you're communicating with spirits who are these spirits and do you believe they were demonic that they absolutely are. They're fallen angels. They're demons. That's who they are. A third of the angels fell. They had a will to sin against God or not. They chose to sin against God and they fell with uh, Satan. And they're here as familiar spirits, meaning they will look like a person. I mean, I've seen many demons or when I was doing readings, I would see somebody that looked like the person's mom or dad or somebody that looked like a child. Um, And they're, they're pretending to be mom and dad the spouse or what have you, and they're feeding you information. They only have that information because they've been around for ages. They've been watching, they've been studying. Um, So that's important for people to know because see what they've already seen, they can report with a hundred percent accuracy. So people say, but how do they know the future? If only God knows all things, 
They're great predictors of the future. They are intelligent creatures. They are not human beings. They are dark. They are evil. And all they want you to do is turn to them and not to God. Get you as far away from Christ as possible. So they have to give you something that will resonate with you, that will be truth, so that you grab onto it and you're like, oh, wow, okay, and this really did something for me. But the future information, the predictions, I always give a little analogy. If you have somebody that you live with and you've lived with them for many years, right, and from Monday to Friday they do X, Y, and Z, you're going to predict next Monday they're going to do that thing, and you're going to have a pretty good accuracy rate, probably 98%, but you're not God and you don't know all things, and that day something could change, right? So the demons can be so precise, so accurate, just from studying, just from watching. It's, and it's it, nothing good. They, they don't care about you. They don't want anything good for you. It's a, it's a mask, it's a deception, and it's a falsehood, and it's evil. That's what it is, just to get you away from eternal glory and away from the truth, so that's what Satan's been doing since Genesis chapter three. He takes a little bit of truth and mix it in with the lies and that because he's got to give you something or you wouldn't be deceived. Yeah, a hundred percent. Right. And, and so you, 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 would, you would communicate with these spirits, with these demonic entities. So as you got deeper into doing this, comes, I mean, you did this for a living. This is what you were paid to do and, and help people, or at least you thought that's what you're doing. There obviously was a trigger effect. There must have been something. And I don't know if you want to share that with us, but there must have been something that got you to the point where you felt I had enough and mm -hmm. you turned to Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Uh, you've said that in, in, in mm -hmm. the past on other shows. So can you maybe share with us if you can, was it, and it doesn't even have to be what exactly happened because it might be personal to you, but something triggered you. And I'm wondering what was the final straw that broke the camel's back that said, I had enough or I was scared or something happened? This is this is the cool, and I, I love to use that word about God sometimes, right? This is the cool thing about God, the power of God, the Holy Spirit. Because I was 36 years old at the end of my 36th year, and I had zero intention of, you know, trying to take on a new worldview or a new philosophy or, hey, let me try on Christianity. No. It was all God. I came to a moment, an end of myself moment, if you will. Um, the demonic oppression was so bad. Like I said before, it's a certain consequence of going down this road, by the way. It's a certain consequence. You will have demonic oppression in the form of depressions, anxieties, bad decisions, uh, what have you. But the but their presence was so heavy on me. I mean, I was afraid to even go into the shower sometimes. I've I've said that before too. I was afraid, and I thought I was afraid of a physical uh, person breaking in. But no, it was, you know, looking back, I was afraid because they were constantly around me, constantly on me, and the evil did manifest, and the evil did present itself. And I was just at this moment, and I cried out to Jesus. I called his name. I called his name. I. I never knew him. This is where I get, I never knew him. You know, so this is, this is who God is. This is the Holy Spirit showing up to um, bring me that peace, to bring me that relief, to show me, to show me the answer to this demonic oppression. That was at the end of my 36th year. And that was the, my first encounter with God, my first real encounter with God. But I was vulnerable. I was spiritually vulnerable. I wasn't quite sure what it all meant. I After that, I knew I didn't want to be a psychic anymore, but I didn't know why. I had no idea. I didn't like run into the Bible, didn't do any of this stuff. So the Lord, over that next 10 months, he started providing. Um, he provided a, a woman who I used to be in the divination class with, and then I went on to read her family and whatever. We were good friends. And she came over and she's like, Jen, you got to come to this church with me. And she starts talking about Jesus. And I had no idea that she had even been saved. Uh, and I actually declined her inv invitation. And a month later, the Holy Spirit was like, Jen, get up. You're going. You're going to church. You're going to that church this day at this time. And that was his plan. And I went into the church and I had never been in a Christian church before. I had only been to Catholic masses. 
So, you know, people are worshiping, they have their hands up in the air. And that lyric, Jesus saved me, and I sang it. And I flashed back to the moment I cried out to Jesus. I just flashed right back. It was like he was right there. He was like, it's me. That was me. <laughs> that was me, Jen. And my heart just became indwelled with the Holy Spirit because I accepted that. I accepted him in that second. And I start crying in the middle of the church. And this is the cool thing about God. Another cool thing about God. Right when I got home from the church, the Lord brought me right to the Bible. And that's who the Holy Spirit is. And that's what he does. He will always point us right to God's word, right to Jesus Christ. And I looked up, what does the Bible say about psychic mediums? And that was, wow. Oh, I was blown away. It's detestable. And the person doing it is an abomination to God. And I was like, okay, I need to quit my job. Made an appointment with the pastor of that church that week, turns the other way. Because it's not from God when Jesus steps in and saves you and rescues you and delivers you from it, you can turn away from it. You are no longer a slave to the devil. You serve a new master, the real one, the king, yes. Lord Jesus. Man, so beautiful to hear you say that. It's incredible. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the energy. And, and you know, the Lord works in mysterious ways, <laughs> you know, and he allows, I, I always said that, I believe he allowed me to do just so much, right. just enough so that I could give testimony onto its dangers and what it could do and so forth. And I believe that the Lord allowed that, you know, because there were times where I just, I didn't go that extra mile, but that's the Lord. You're just enough kid that uh, I'm going to give you, but I'm going to use you. I'm going to use you. And I believe he's using you to give warnings to other psychic mediums. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've brought Christ into your life. Uh, things have changed for you. I'm quite sure uh, mm -hmm. you have a, a very successful TikTok channel. Uh, you have a website and we're going to give people that information so they can follow you more and get to hear more uh, of some of the things. And uh, you got your own ministry going on to try mm -hmm. and help people. So again, so you can help others that are new, maybe watching mm -hmm. this. Is it true? Do you believe in your heart that mediums and psychics are actually talking to demons to yes. get information? Yes, that's that's the only entity they're communicating with. They're not communicating with any sort of good spirit. There's no such thing outside of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only good spirit. He is God. Uh, outside of the Holy Spirit, you are talking to demons, and that's and that's who you're dealing with. Divination opens the door to demons. That's it, period, end of story. There, you are not communicating with a spirit. A spirit guide, in my opinion, is a counterfeit Holy Spirit pretending to guide you, pretending to um, have your best interest at heart, provide some sort of wisdom. No, there's not. it's a demon. That's what a spirit guide is. You're not talking to angels. You are not talking to ascended masters. These are just they're just taking these terms and applying it where it doesn't belong because, and, and it's because they're deceived. I mean, it's deception, Deception, but it's, yeah. but, but it's demonic. So it's not children. No. It's not your grandfather. It's not, no. uh, you know, the dog from, from the corner store or, right. or, or, or some guy <laughs> who used to live in your house. It's, right. it's something evil and dark that are, that's giving you information, but there's a price to pay. Isn't there, Jen? There's a price Huge. to pay for that information. Huge, huge price to pay. What I always say in the short term, the short term consequences start with demonic oppression because now you've opened the door, you've given legal permission to them to come into your life, into your space, and now you're going to have times where you may not even realize it. These, an onset of anxiety, um, turmoil in your spirit, depressions, illness even. You can even have illness, okay? Um, you don't want to hear from God. You're living in doubts. Uh, you know, you know, all this type of thing, and it will get worse and worse. Nightmares. Maybe you start seeing demons. Maybe you start hearing from them. And then you keep going to the problem for the solution. That's the deal. Oh, but I saw this. Let me, you know, Google this. And I'll, I found this medium website. And I'll ask them what's going on. And I'll ask, no, stop going to the problem for the solution. You need to take it to God immediately. Now, that's the short term consequences. If one doesn't come to Christ, which is the agenda of the demons that are hovering around you, 
now that they're in, right? If you don't come to Christ, they've got you and your outcome is, um, I, I'm bold, George, I hope that's okay. I'm yes, bold. Please. You are hell bound and that is where you will go um, eternally uh, because there is on, there are only two options, right? Eternal glory with Jesus Christ or going to hell in um, eternal torment. And you can only be before our holy God through Jesus Christ. It's the only way. No works. Works can't get you there. It doesn't matter how nice you are, which is what I was trying to say before. I was a nice, I'm a nice person, compassionate person. Well, that's great. But I was a psychic medium. I was hellbound. I was without Christ. I was in bondage to my sin. That was it. When you put your faith and trust in Lord Jesus, you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that he died on the cross for your sin, that he is the propitiation of um, for us, right? He fulfilled God's wrath for our sin. You believe he uh, died. He was buried and raised the third day. Of course, the Bible says that you will be saved. But you have to recognize that you on your own, you are a sinner. We deserve hell, but the Lord gave us away and his name is Jesus Christ and he was the sinless he is the sinless son of God 100% man 100% God and he is the way the truth in life and he's the only way so that is the long term consequence and the devil will get you so he he wants to get you so addicted that you keep going to that medium you keep going to those cards and every time you do that you're getting further and further away from God but you can be saved and you can be delivered from that through Christ Jesus, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Unbelievable. I love it. And I'm glad you're, you're putting it out there because you are, you know, a, a, a ex medium, an ex psychic. This is mm -hmm. what you did for a living. You understand it. You lived that life. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're giving testimony how you came to Christ. Now, divination is one thing and that's your specialty, but I want to ask you something. Mm -hmm. And we talked about it on this show. Do you believe that objects are able to be, um, to have this energy uh, connected to it. You've heard of like people going to an antique shop and they bought something, they come home and then bad things begin to happen. Weird, they got to get rid of it. Uh, they, 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 they want it out of their house. Uh, there's an energy, a negative energy attached to it. Do you believe that negative energy can be attached to objects? Well, I guess you have to think about what negative energy is, right? Mm -hmm. If it, if that object was in the hands of somebody practicing witchcraft, yes, okay, yes, get that out of your house. And if you're if you start having some demonic activity in your house, some paranormal activity in your house, if you will, and you know that you went to that antique shop last week and you got this thing, I would just no questions asked, get rid of it. I'm glad you brought that up. There's a clip I want to share because I'd like to get your comments. I don't know if you heard of John Zaffis. And John, Havis, John Zaffis is a, a relative of one Lorraine Warren. And uh, he does his own thing. And uh, he basically goes to locations that are apparently haunted. And part of his investigation, he always seems to find an object, a trigger object. That's the cause and root of the hauntings in his uh, investigations. So what he does is he takes him, he does a prayer, a binding prayer, and he brings him to a place that he has where he puts this negative energy there. He's able to pray over it daily or weekly and try to contain these objects and this energy so it doesn't get out into the real world. Sometimes you have to be careful of breaking these objects because if they're attached to these objects, where does it go? There's so many different theories to it, but I want to play a clip. And then I'd love to get your feedback and just hear what you got to say. So everyone, if you want to maybe turn up your volume, take a look. This is John Zaffis. Uh, and he basically discusses and talks about how he tries to help people by finding the root of the issue, which is for him usually haunted artifacts. Take a look.
Many people ask me why I started this museum with these things in it. My main objective was to be able to educate people on all the different types of haunted items that are out there. Yeah, you know, talking about mirrors and everything like that, they do hold energy. And you know, some of it is actually believed that the energy can get trapped in between the actual glass and the filament that's put on the back of it. Can spirit be trapped in mirrors? Yes, that's been, the mirrors have been used for many, many years with conjuring and uh, putting spirit in them, and it stays there. The one that uh, just came in today I think is pretty cool, and it's super, super creepy. And um, it will be going up here with the other mirrors on display. It's not every household that has so many paranormal items in it. That's why I was very glad when John had the museum built to have them all stored there. I know that in the past there have been occasions where something has come home with him. Um, you know, I've seen a picture or two, but he's pretty good at not letting us know that. It's kind of like uh, my own Ripley's Museum in my backyard. Sometimes people are afraid of these things. Sometimes they break them, they'll burn them. The best thing I recommend to people is either call in paranormal investigators, clergy, someone to remove it. Because if you burn it or break it, the spirit can gravitate towards you. Hmm. Thoughts on that, Jen? Just you're curious about what you think about that. Yeah, well, I, I want to touch on what he yes. said at the end. Um, yeah. Because it's important to know that demons are around and of course you don't want to do anything you don't want to open any doors to them but we have to remember that um we have the victory in christ this is what you need christ right so we were talking about the spiritual battle i wouldn't want people to walk around in fear you know what i'm saying like because you but you have to have the victor so you have to have christ because demons bow down to jesus every everywhere um in the Bible, you can see they know who he is. They know him better than people do, um, you know, and, and they tremble. They shudder at his name. He has full authority over those demons. So, um, you know, be, I, would, I would just caution people to be careful when you're going near these things. I have told people to burn tarot cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, we think of Acts 19, 19, huge revival in Ephesus, and they burned all of their... Um, magic books and, and things like that. So I guess I might have a little bit of a different take on this, but um, remember that uh, you are a sitting duck without Christ. You need him in this battle. You need the Lord Jesus. You need the armor of God. You need to put it on. You need to be in the word of God every single day because the demons try to get to your mind too. So second Corinthians 10 and five says we demolish all pretensions and arguments that set themselves up against the knowledge of God. So how do you get the knowledge of God? You've got to be in the word so that when those thoughts or those intrusive thoughts and how they try to confuse you and, and plant doubt, seeds of doubts and everything, you will combat that with the knowledge of God. Right. So I'm just trying to say, um, call on the name of Jesus. Um, he he will. Uh, he has full authority. A hundred percent. I'll agree with you. When I originally got rid of, you know, the stuff that I used, mm -hmm. I put it in a garbage bag and threw it in the garbage. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, but I, again, I think it's key what you said. And some people, it, it'll go through one year and mm -hmm. they, they hear it, but they don't understand it, which is putting on the armor of God, the full authority. And you have to be in that. So you, you got to be in that if you're going to do, if you're going to throw it out or burn cards. Those that are still filled with sin and burn it, it's going to be difficult to be protected because something negative might attach to you because you haven't purified or, or sanctified. So you, you, you can't just do that. But I believe what you said is key to the success of getting rid of it is through the authority of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You're, you're casting it out. You're burning it. You're throwing it out. And you can and you can with his authority. I mean, we've seen it, like you said, uh, he, you know, demons knew him by name. What do you want here? What are you doing here? It's, it's documented everywhere in, the, um, in, in Revelations and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many stories. And, and I said this, I, I think maybe four weeks ago, I talked about how the first exorcist was Jesus and how he cast out these, these demons mm -hmm. into swine, into pigs, mm -hmm. who in turn could not stay or chose not to stay in those bodies mm -hmm. and threw themselves off the cliff to die. Mm -hmm. Again, guys, 
it said we are made in God's image. And it's a beautiful creation. We're able to taste food smell flowers, see the sun rise, go swimming in the, in the ocean and see beautiful things. Demons cannot do that. Do you understand? They cannot do that. So the best thing for them is to poison God's creation. And that's to destroy what's closest to him, mankind. So you got to be careful. And I agree with Jen. You must put on the full armor of God if you're going to burn these things. And as you saw in the video, Jen, there was a section where you had tarot cards, balls, mm -hmm. mirrors, all that stuff. So that it happens. Mediums do this. Let me ask you. If you were to give any advice to any mediums or psychics watching this right now, today, if they're watching it right now, what would you say to them if they're watching Oh, I would say, I would say, um, please understand. Well, I'm appealing to them now. Please understand that I, well, I understand how sure you are, how certain you are that you're speaking to deceased people, that you're trying to help people. And I believe you're trying to help people. I, I know that full well, but you are deceived. It is demonic. And there really is a spiritual realm. You already know that. You already know there's a spiritual realm. I would ask you to um, go into the Bible, read the Bible for yourself from beginning to end, and uh, really see who God is so that you can come out of this, be saved and be rescued from the demonic attachments that you have from serving the devil. Um, advice would be... Um, uh, out, other than reading the Bible, coming to God, asking him, fairly listening for, for him to uh, reach you, right? Um, watch testimonies of other people like me, my friend Doreen Virtue. Um, we have a lot of us. God is saving so many of us out of the occult, out of the new age. It's possible. And there's a reason. And there's a miracle transformation that happens. Um, and that's what that's all God. That's that's not something man can do on his own. So be moved by that power of God um, and watch those testimonies. Unbelievable stuff. We're, we we got a few minutes left. Uh, you know, you mentioned something. It's, it's very important. Um, and I mean, you mentioned a few things and, and I'm trying to make mental notes. I should have my pad here because it's great stuff what you're saying and great advice, but you, you're, you're obviously reaching out to these people so they understand it's dark um, and it's, it's, it's not good. And I, I was on one of those people where, you know, I was dabbling with it and I said, ah, you know, I got deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And that, and the original plan for this show was originally to reach out to those uh, occultists and say, there, there's nothing good that could come from this guys. There's nothing. Nothing. And earlier in the show, you mentioned, you know, some celebrity names. Yesterday, I was on, I believe, Google, and there was a search that came up, and I forget what it was. And it was basically, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, uh, M MM, it's one of the websites. I, I can't remember what it is. MSNBC has a major, you know, has a, their, their website you go to and they have information. And out of all the stories, Jen, out of all the stories, oh no, two stories popped up. They made it a point for it to pop up. First story: ten celebrities that don't believe in God. Mm. That was the first story, and they went through every single one and then quoted them in interviews. Mm. I said, "Oh, the follow-up story. Get ready, because I believe they're trying to implement this." And, and, and trying to uh, brainwash people to this stuff for a reason. The second story, celebrities that practice witchcraft. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is on MM, MSN, BC. This is the, the mainstream media. It's a page that you go to, and they just give you other stories. But out of all the stories, they thought it was important, one, to talk about 10 celebrities that don't believe in God, and then two, the follow-up, 10 celebrities that practice witchcraft. Do you see where this is going, Jen? Do you believe yeah. there's there's a reason for this? Yeah, of course. We, we live in a time especially where um, they're literally trying to cancel God. You talk about cancel culture. They're trying to cancel God, get him out of everything, get him out of schools, get him out of, um, you know, movies and this, that, and the other. And they're trying to indoctrinate uh, the youth and the masses, really, regardless of the age. Um, hey, look, don't go to God, but go over here to witchcraft because this is great. You're going to get everything you want. Hey, here's a little deal with the devil. 
You know, so um, I'm not surprised by this, unfortunately, because we know the devil's agenda. It's just sad and disgusting to see how um, seemingly successful he can be. But remember, God is still bigger. God is also using um, shows, people like us, George. Yes. Um, we're coming out there. We've got ministries. He is raising up more and more ministries. I'm seeing it. I hope uh, people out there are seeing it too, where we're we're out there. We're boldly talking about the dangers of uh, and the demonic nature of divination. So, but yeah, it's sad. It's, it's, it's horrible. You know, it's an interesting conversation. Jen, I got to bring you back. We got to do this like monthly. I got to bring you back for a monthly edition <laughs> and do a series with you. I think it's key. And we still have to do a Q and A with you on Patreon as well. Uh, so we're going to bring you back 100%. I want to thank you for being here and sharing your knowledge, your experience uh, and warnings to other psychic mediums. So those that message me, is it okay to play with tarot cards? Jen, your answer was? No. <laughs> me and you're asking is it okay just for horoscopes jen you're no. asking this <laughs> no 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 okay so tarot cards horoscopes the third one if you're at the city fair and there's a medium and she says it's only fun it's only five bucks what do you say to that jen no stay away from all things divination don't open the door. It's demonic. That's it. I don't care what it looks like. Remember, Satan masquerades as an angel of light. It's going to look good. It's going to seem good. It's going to seem innocent, but it's not. Ladies and gentlemen, incredible. Before we sign off, Jen, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind, maybe a closing uh, with a, a prayer, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just give you great thanks, Father, as we come before your throne of grace, Lord. And we just uh, pray, Father, for... Um, Everybody who would see this uh, program today, Lord, that they that souls would be one, Father, that uh, souls would be reached for you, for your kingdom, Lord. And uh, God, I thank you for George. I thank you for his ministry, Lord. And I thank you for our salvation, Heavenly Father. And I pray for the lost souls out there, God. I pray they would come to an awareness of you, Lord, and that they would be saved today, that you would save them, Lord. Draw them near to you, God. Uh, so that they can have an abundant life and eternal life, Lord. And I pray, Father, for the spiritual protection of those watching right now, God, um, and that you would um, make people more aware uh, of the dangers of the devil, God, and his and his games and his tools and, and everything else, Lord, so that they would stay far, far away from them today, Lord. And if there's anybody watching that does have uh, these things in their home or somebody that's been... Um, thinking about uh, practicing uh, uh, new age, uh, you know, getting a reading or what have you, Lord, I pray that you would instantaneously change their mind this moment, Lord, cancel that appointment, cancel that chart, Lord, and bring them to you, Father God. And we just ask you all of these things in the name of our Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. Unbelievable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to uh, know more about Jen and her story and follow her on social media, I will post some of her links in the description underneath. But Jen, for now, maybe share where everyone could follow you uh, and how they could support your ministry. Oh, sure. You can go to www.xpsychicsaved.com. And there, that links to my TikTok, my Instagram, um, my YouTube, whatever else I've got going on, and my books too. I um, My first book is From Psychic to Saved. That's available on Amazon. That's my testimony. My most recent book is Out of the New Age and Into the Truth, also available on Amazon. I go in a little bit deeper into some of the New Age topics. And uh, pray for me because I just started writing my third book on spiritual warfare. I can't wait to, for it to come out. We're all going to be praying for you. We thank you for being here. Any last thing you want to say to everybody before we sign off? I pray that God would give you the ears to hear and the eyes to see the truth of the Lord today. Stay away from divination. It's demonic. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, again, I thank you all for watching. Get outside, get some fresh air, get some vitamin D, raise your vibration. What I mean by that is <laughs> smile, laugh. Go out with your friends, play with your dog, go into the water, uh, just watch a comedy and, and don't be negative because that's what they want. They, they want to suppress you with negative energy. They want you full of anxiety and sorrow and sadness. That's how they win. That's a very low vibration. That's how these demonic beings work. So you have to raise it up high on God's vibration. Smile, laugh, give him thanks, give him praise, give him glory. I thank you all for watching. We'll see you next week.
God bless and good night.